TV Recapped here. Today, we will be talking about the first episode of Mr. Robot Season 1. Mr. Robot follows a young programmer named Elliot. Elliot lives two lives, a cybersecurity engineer during the day and a vigilant hacker at night. The episode starts with Elliot saying hello friend to the audience. He considers the audience as his imaginary friend. Elliot then says that he is about to say something that is top secret. It is about a conspiracy surrounding the top 1% of the top 1%. Elliot thinks he is being followed because of what happened the previous night. He says that he should have gone to Angela's birthday party instead. A flashback then shows Elliot at Ron's coffee shop. As the owner comes in, Elliot approaches his table and sits down. He confirms the owner's identity and starts talking about how fast the internet is at the shop. Elliot explains that he found this strange and decided to hack Ron's network. Elliot then reveals that he discovered a child website named Plato's Boys. He adds that Ron uses Tor to keep his servers incognito. Ron gets shaken by this revelation. He then assumes that Elliot is just trying to blackmail him. He says if he pays Elliot, the information will be leaked anyway. Elliot then tells him that he has already tipped off the police. Panicking, Ron tries to pay off Elliot. Elliot stands up, grabs his bag, and tells Ron that he doesn't care about the money. He then leaves as the police enter the coffee shop. Back at the subway, Elliot still thinks about what he did the previous night. A man calls his attention, but Elliot ignores him. The man then says it is an exciting time in the world right now. We then see Elliot enter the all-safe cybersecurity offices. He talks about being a vigilant hacker at night and a cybersecurity engineer during the day. Before Elliot reaches his desk, his boss Gideon calls for him. As he enters Gideon's office, he sees Angela. According to Elliot, Angela is one of the good ones. Gideon then informs Elliot that one of their clients has been hacked again. He tells Elliot and Angela that their client is sending a group over to know what happened. As Elliot leaves the office, Angela confronts him about his absence at her birthday party. She says that this time, Elliot promised her that he would try to go. A flashback shows that Elliot did go to Angela's party. It is then implied that he left shortly afterward. The flashback cuts as Angela calls Elliot's attention. She says that Elliot always thinks about something else when she is talking to him. The tension eventually goes down, and Ollie comes in. Elliot quickly leaves while telling him that there is a meeting coming. Ollie tells Angela that Elliot can't stand him. He then kisses Angela and leaves. In the next scene, Elliot is talking with a psychiatrist, Krista. He tells the audience about his history with Krista. Elliot then says it was easy to hack Krista. Elliot shares that Krista is divorced and is on online dating sites. She is currently dating someone named Michael Hansen. Elliot says that he couldn't find anything about Michael online. Krista asks Elliot what disappoints him about society. Elliot answers but only in his head. He explains that he considers social media, movies, and celebrities celebrities as a means of sedation. He continues, saying people are cowards. After Elliot says nothing, Krista appears frustrated. Elliot tells her that she shouldn't be frustrated. Elliot then explains that she is different than most people. Elliot tells her that at least she understands the feeling of being alone. He also adds that Krista wants to protect people from feeling that way. He then says that he respects Krista for this. Krista wonders how Elliot knows what she does. She asks Elliot and he tells her that he doesn't know how he knew. In truth, Elliot found out because he has been reading her emails. Krista then asks Elliot if he went to Angela's birthday party. Elliot lies and tells her that he did, and he even got a girl's number. He says that the girl is cute and she likes the Hunger Games. After hearing this, Krista says that Elliot is hiding again. She explains that when Elliot hides, his delusions come back. She tells Elliot that this is dangerous. Krista changes the subject and asks about the men that Elliot has been seeing. Elliot answers that the men are gone, and the meds she gave him are working. Back at the all-safe offices, Ollie asks Elliot out for lunch. Elliot answers that he already has other plans. Ollie then tells Elliot that things have been awkward between them. To this, Elliot says that it is okay for things to be awkward. Ollie answers that it is not for him, and he wants them to get along. As Ollie explains, Elliot starts telling the audience about Ollie. Elliot shares Ollie's Facebook likes. He talks about Ollie's preferences in movies and music. He then says that these things are enough for him to not like Ollie. Elliot shares that he witnessed Ollie's first I love you to Angela. He further adds that after hacking Ollie, he found out that he was cheating on Angela. Ollie cheated on Angela multiple times with a girl named Stella B. Elliot says he thought about telling Angela about this. However, he is not ready for what will happen after. This makes him hold off on revealing Ollie's infidelities. Back at the conversation, Ollie says that he likes Elliot. He then says he wants Elliot to like him too. To this, Elliot answers that he will try harder. In his mind, Elliot thinks that he shouldn't hate Ollie. He says that Ollie is not that bad of a person. For him, Ollie is too dumb to be bad. Elliot then shifts his attention to the people that just entered the offices. These people are the clients that Gideon was talking about earlier. Elliot considers these people to be the bad ones. Elliot talks about their clients, the E-Corp. He explains that the company is so big and is literally everywhere. Elliot says that he reprogrammed his mind to see, hear, and read E-Corp as Evil Corp. As the people from E-Corp pass by, Elliot notices Terry Colby. Terry is the chief technology officer of E-Corp. Elliot thinks Terry is not qualified for his job. He then notes that Terry even owns a BlackBerry, a device not known for its security. Tyrell Wellex stays behind and greets Elliot. He points out that Elliot uses a desktop environment for Linux called GNOME. 
Tyrell says he has a different preference, but it will be fun working with Elliot. As Tyrell leaves, he says bonsoir, Elliot. During his walk back to his apartment, Elliot expresses his powerlessness. He voices out his dismay about not stopping the hand that controls them. He says that he's not that special and he's just alone. In his apartment, Elliot is shown crying by himself. He wonders what people usually do when they are sad. He then says that reaching out to family and friends is not an option. Instead, Elliot uses morphine to handle his problems. He explains that he uses lesser than 30 milligrams so that his body doesn't build a tolerance to the drug. He also takes Suboxone, which is for patients on withdrawal. Elliot notices that he is out of Suboxone. He goes to his next-door neighbor Shyla to buy more. Shyla offers the drug for free, but Elliot refuses. As Elliot is about to leave, Shyla asks him if he wants to do some drugs with her. The next scene then shows the two of them naked in bed. Elliot is smoking as he gets an alert from Krista's Instagram. He gets up and decides to go. Elliot watches Krista and Michael from outside the restaurant. He gets Michael's address by calling the company of the taxi that Michael got in. Elliot then notices the man from the subway earlier across the street. Moments later, Elliot finds Michael walking on the street. He calls Michael's attention and asks if he could borrow the latter's phone. Elliot then explains that his phone is dead and he needs to call his mother. Michael agrees to lend Elliot his phone. Elliot actually called himself to get Michael's number. After leaving, Elliot gets a call from Angela. Angela tells him to go to Allsafe immediately. She says that the eCorp servers were hacked again. She then adds that this time it was a DDoS attack. Elliot asks if she contacted Lloyd as he is on call. She answers that Lloyd is there, but she doesn't think he can handle it. Angela expresses how badly she needs Elliot's help. Elliot agrees to go there. As Elliot arrives, he begins diagnosing the problem. He says that the situation is worse than he thought. Gideon arrives and Elliot explains the root of the problem. Elliot says that the only way they can fix the problem is to shut down the servers and clean the infection. Only after doing this can they bring the servers back up. Gideon agrees and tells Elliot to come with him. Gideon tells Lloyd to take everything online. The server farm is on Dulles, so Gideon calls for a plan. They both arrive at the server farm and Elliot works on the problem immediately. After he barely stops the virus, he tells Gideon that he'll be looking into the infected servers. Gideon tells him to meet at the elevators later. Elliot looks for any marks left by the hacker. He eventually finds a file labeled fsociety dat along with a text file. The text file contains the words, leave me here. Elliot contemplates and finally decides to not delete the files he found. Back at the plane, Gideon shares that he is gay out of a sudden. He then starts talking about his private life and his partner. Elliot thanks him for sharing. Elliot then says that Gideon shouldn't worry because hackers have short attention spans. Gideon appears to be stressed about the recent hacks. He then tells Elliot that E Corp is thinking about cutting ties with them. Gideon says that E Corp is 80% of their business. This means it will be over for them if they lose E Corp. Gideon loosens up and tells Elliot that he feels like he can talk to him. He jokingly says that Elliot might be happy if their company went under. After some thought, Elliot promises Gideon that he will find the hackers. A while later, Elliot sits by himself while thinking about what to do next. The mysterious man from before then sits in front of him. Elliot notices a marking with Mr. Robot on the man's jacket. The man tells Elliot that he will leave at the next stop and that Elliot should follow him. He then adds that this is why he did not delete it. The man is obviously referring to the files that Elliot found earlier. Surprised at how the man knew, Elliot decides to get off at the next stop. Elliot sits with the mysterious man and asks who he is. The man tells Elliot where they are supposed to go instead. He then tells Elliot he can't tell him anything until they get there. Elliot tells the man that he knows that he has been following him. He then asks the mysterious man what he wants from him. The man tells Elliot about his father, who was a thief. His father got arrested and died in prison five years later. The man says that he thought his father was free, but he was wrong. His father was actually in prison, just like where Elliot is now. He then tells Elliot that he'll break him out of that prison. They finally arrive at Coney Island. It then gets revealed that the man, Mr. Robot, has a team of hackers working for him. He tells Elliot how they work, but doesn't disclose their plan. Elliot then finds out that the DDoS attack last night was a test for him. Later, Elliot goes home by himself while still thinking about what happened. He then finds Angela waiting for him at his door. Angela was happy that she did not get fired, so she asked Elliot to get high while watching his favorite movie. They get into Elliot's room and find a naked Shyla sleeping in the bed. Elliot explains that this is not how it looks like. Angela decides to leave and says that this is good. Elliot then angrily tells Shyla to go. Elliot then tries to find out as much as he can about Mr. Robot and F Society. He finds very little information and compliments Mr. Robot on how good he is. Elliot puts everything he found out in a white envelope. He plans to give this envelope to Gideon and E Corp for evidence. He says that while it's not a lot, the information should be enough. Elliot goes back to Coney Island to talk to Mr. Robot again. He first sees Darlene, who was responsible for the DDoS attack earlier. Mr. Robot arrives and tells him if he likes Ferris wheels. Elliot tells 
Mr. Robot that he was turning him in. Mr. Robot does not appear to be concerned. Instead, he shares his plan to destroy E Corp's databases. By doing this, most of the world's consumer debt will be erased. Mr. Robot says this will be the largest incident of wealth redistribution in history. Mr. Robot tells Elliot to put Terry Colby's IP address on the DAT file. This will make the FBI think that Terry is responsible for the hacks. Elliot says that this won't stop E Corp. Mr. Robot tells him that the only way to stop E Corp is to take them down limb by limb. Back at his home, Elliot does research on debt and its effects. He then decides to do what Mr. Robot told him. Elliot creates a blue envelope with evidence to incriminate Terry Colby. He puts the blue envelope in his backpack along with the white one. Back at Allsafe, Elliot and the others meet with the E Corp executives and FBI agents. Elliot initially puts the white envelope on the table. Terry then starts treating Angela rudely while she explains what happened during the attack. Elliot appears to be affected by Terry's decision. He then replaces the white envelope with the blue one. Tyrell notices as Elliot makes the switch. Elliot hands over the blue envelope to the FBI. He says they'll know who did it once they decrypt the file. After 19 days, there is still no news from the FBI. Elliot decides to go to the Coney Arcade only to find that the team is no longer there. To take his mind off things, he attempts hacking Michael Hansen again. His attempts turn out to be unsuccessful. Elliot then concludes that Michael wasn't using his real name. In the next scene, Elliot confronts Michael with the truth. Elliot seems to have found out a lot about Michael. He demanded that Michael break up with Krista and tell her the truth. If not, he will inform the police about one of the escorts Michael hired. He tells Michael that the escort was a minor. This is a bluff, but Elliot manages to pull it off anyway. Michael reluctantly agrees to Elliot's demands. Before he leaves, Elliot asks for Michael's dog. Back at his home, Elliot makes a copy of Michael's files and hides it. He then deletes the file from his laptop. In their next meeting, Elliot sees that Krista has been crying. This confirms that Michael kept his end of the bargain. Elliot asks if Krista is okay. They start to talk about Elliot's concerns about Angela. Krista then advises Elliot to get in touch with Angela in person. She then stresses the importance of real human interaction. Elliot confronts Angela back at Allsafe. As they were talking, news about Terry Colby's arrest goes out. Terry was found by the FBI to be the one responsible for E Corp's hacking incident. As Elliot rejoices outside, a couple of men dressed in black tell him to get inside their car. Elliot did not have a choice but to agree. The men in black take Elliot to a conference room. After entering, Elliot sees Tyrell Wellick. Tyrell greets him by saying, Bonsoir, Elliot. Elliot gets confused, and the episode ends. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.